that Sony might be pissed by that. <laughs> we'll talk about Sony in a negative connotation. <laughs> Okay, today, <laughs> how do I know what's accurate? Yeah, how do you? How does anyone know what's accurate? Well, that's, that's a good question. That's a toughie. Yeah. Yeah, how do you know? How well, do you know? I think, I think you'd really have to be sitting next to someone who does know. And then you listen to the same thing. You go, okay, so what is it than accurate? Yeah, but who well, knows? What's more complicated than that, though? <laughs> because accurate would probably mean that the recording is replayed perfectly in this context. But you don't know if the recording was done right. So what you tend to care about is whether or not the thing you're listening to sounds like it was supposed to listen to, how, how it was supposed to sound. So if you're listening to something that's actually a thing you can listen to, an instrument or a person, seeing it live in person, that, I guess, helps give you a baseline. But, but how boosted. do you know? Like if they start putting effects on and stuff yeah. like that, it's complicated. How do you know how it's supposed to sound? Because there's a lot of tracks like we were talking about like that bass warble and stuff mm -hmm. like that on like the Billie Eilish track. Uh, there's a lot of stuff like that on modern songs that it's hard to know if you're listening to it the way it's supposed to or if it's equipment issues or electronics or some cabling or some interference, some trouble somewhere down your chain that's causing that issue. Yeah, well, live doesn't work for that kind of stuff. Right. They don't always do so the what same do do? thing live. And, yeah. And you're listening through whatever JBLs then, so, yeah. You know. Yeah, live, usually they don't have a stellar system, <laughs> but it's all over the map. Sometimes it's pretty good, sometimes it's terrible. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know, uh, I don't know how you'd describe accuracy. I mean, uh, you know, in terms of without knowing, like you said, what the original sounded like. Right. And the only one that really knew that were the people in the room, pretty much. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, ac but accuracy, you could, you could guesstimate it, though. I mean, you can... Sure. You, most people have... I think most people have a feeling or an idea after listening to enough music in their lives that what a guitar should sound well, yeah. like or any particular instrument. Well, especially vocals, yeah. you know? Because you're hearing people all the time. Voice for vocals sure. Vocals are pretty good. Yeah. yeah. But even a guitar, so, people put all kinds of effects on them. Yeah. It's hard to know. If you're looking at something, some minor impact, it's right. hard to know if it's right. Right. You can listen to it on multiple different chains, multiple bits of gear, and if it sounds similar on each, it's probably being paid, played back pretty close, but <laughs> that's no surefire way. The only time I've really been struck by the sense that somebody actually knew what they were talking about, like that, that there was some sort of definitive way to prove this, was occasionally we see somebody at a show that they pick this weird, obscure track out of some random collection, and, um, or they bring their own music. And they inevitably get into the story about how they were there for them this recording mm -hmm. in 64 or whatever, right? Yeah. And um, of course quite a few going, times. Go, they're going by their, yeah. their recollection. Their memory. Yes. Which and it's, yeah. Isn't it's always perfect. Yeah, right. yeah. So <laughs> that could be skewed over a number of years. That's challenging, but I've had one guy in particular that uh, really struck me as knowing what he was talking about in this yeah. regard, and he seemed to be pretty clear-cut that how it was played back on that system at that time, at it was uh, Can Jam New York, York. Yeah. 2019, 2020. Yeah, I think it was last year, yeah. Yeah. And he told me this is exactly how it sounded. He was in the room. This was like a multi-day process. Mm. And this is exactly how it sounded. But no one has guys like that laying around. Nah, you don't. Like, hey, man, <laughs> no. come over here. Tell me if this is accurate. Well, the thing I found interesting about that is apparently he was going around and listening to this Same particular track, track on, on different sets. Oh. And so that's why he was that's telling me about cool. it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. But you don't see that too often. Mm, I saw it Once three times. Yeah. So Aside no. from that, though, how do you really know? How are you sure? Yeah. How do you achieve enough confidence? Maybe, there, maybe we have to look at this from another direction. How would you... How would you describe something that's not accurate? Inaccurate. Inaccuracies in playback. Yeah. You know? well. So, okay, so if you can't describe what is, what isn't. There's it's all, really but there, there's a lot of distortions that occur in recordings and, and, yeah. and even through the chain. I, I remember years ago doing a Jack Johnson tune. I forget what the track is with the triangle in it, but it sounds like a cowbell on a tube. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One yeah. of the earlier Jack Johnson CDs. Mm -hmm. It's actually, a, it's like, if you look it up, it's a triangle there. Yeah. You run it through a 100 watt OTL tube yeah, amp, and it sounds like it. someone's hitting a cow. It was on Brushfire Fairy Tales, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And it was, and it's like, yeah. you know, it's funny because mm -hmm. it, and if you listen to that solid state, it sounds more like a triangle. Mm -hmm. And it just shows you how different systems can, can take the harmonic balance or structure right. of 
just a single instrument and change that. Yeah. So, and I, I don't think necessarily we have to pick on tube versus solid state. And I'm not saying that all tubes do that. Probably but this not. particular LT amp actually sounded, it was a Jewel Electra. It's beautiful sounding amp in terms of yeah. sound. It was a beautiful sounding amp with a with a uh, with a with the right speakers. It really was, you know, hand built all this stuff. Uh, they're out of business now, but their products still exist. But but anyway, yeah, it obviously added coloration to the mm -hmm. music that uh, didn't exist yeah. in the original recording, you well, know. And some people like that. Uh, yeah, you know. So but accuracy that, isn't the end all. I yeah. Guess. So I mean, you know, there's something to be said about accuracy because there were a lot of people who fell in love with that that right. type of amplifier mm -hmm. and. It's not to say that it distorts the hell out of everything, but it, you know, and I, I don't even know, like, you know, from a measurement pr perspective, which I don't want to talk about measurements, but I don't even know how you'd quantify that one, right? Because because it's not it's not going to show up in the freak response, I don't think. I mean, that you put in a triangle, you get out a cowbell. Like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cowbell wave? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not mm -hmm. really sure what mm -hmm. what distortion characteristics right. would, would define that other than a, a harmonic yeah. disp the display of harmonics. On like a sine wave coming in, you know. Well, that's the challenge with this stuff because, in my experience, the vast majority of people really don't care if it's accurate. Only a small portion do, and I understand why you might be interested in accuracy. The challenge is it's near impossible to ensure that everything in your chain is playing back properly, and even then, the mic placement, the mic type, style, how it's recorded, the mastering and stuff like that—all this is very important to ensure that yeah. what actually happened is recorded and processed Well, that's properly. the thing. I think a lot of artists don't want to be accurate about. Well, it's not, not priority, trying to right? be accurate. You're trying to be enjoyable. You're trying to create yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. You know, and they have their own way of doing it. Mm -hmm. So the guitars are, like you said, distorted all the freaking time. Uh, yeah. Most of the time. Piano, <laughs> they, I think they really, really try to record piano, but find that it's rather difficult yeah. to shove a mic up the ass of a piano and expect it to sound good. It yeah. sounds like a mic shoved in a piano, yeah. right? And at a distance, now you got a room involved. So again, it's accurate in the sense of the room that it's in. Yeah. But it's not really accurate. It's not what the piano sounds like if you're sitting behind it. So what is accurate with if it's room like that? I don't know. It depends on the again on the beholder on how somebody laid it down, how they recorded, how they mic'd it. So you know, really, you know, I think accuracy is kind of a not possible. Well, it's the accuracy is in the in the eye of the beholder. Well, you know, however you look however at it. you think yeah. <laughs> what's accurate to you because yeah. i mean maybe at the like end of the day distortions people like certain distortions. are you going to listen to something you don't like how it sounds even though it's more technically accurate i don't know some people do i know some yeah. people do but most people just want it to sound the way they want it to sound the only people i see that really want the highest accuracy they could get are the people that are doing the thing they're they're in the art well that's true. they're recording content or something like that yeah uh, then they seem to be much more focused on that, but they're listening to a different thing. They're listening to how well it was recorded, mastered, or whatever, how the mic placement was, or the room it was in, or whatever. They're listening to different things than the average person's listening to. They're listening to how it was done more often than not. Yeah, not for enjoyment. Right. And yeah, so there's way different technicalities on the recording side than there is on oh, the playback sure. side. Yeah. They're looking at completely different yeah, technical completely different. things than, you know, than, than, than we are listening, mm -hmm. for sure. So. Yeah. In that sense, too, I mean, you know, again, it's it's accurate on their end, as mm -hmm. far as they're concerned, right? They made the recording in right. monitoring and mastering it. They made the recording the way they wanted it to sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, whatever the hell that is, we don't know at our end because we're playing right. it back through a completely different setup. Mm -hmm. But that's so. a real trick right there because a lot of times people are calibrating their sound effectively to sound the way they feel it should. The studio sound on their speakers or whatever setup they have for the yeah. playback chain. Um, and a lot of times people inevitably find a flaw or some limitation in that playback chain. It might be 10, 15, 20, 30 years. You might never really discover what it was or what happened or or that maybe you've been mastering slightly askew the whole time. Um, it's, it's a real challenge. because sure mistakes happen all the time. Sure, but, but we're sure. talking about typically fractions of a percent or some trivial difference. Well, yeah. Like to the end user, it doesn't really make a big difference. And then who's ever to say they didn't so, want it that way too. It's so, tough. You know? Yeah, I mean, unless you got like vocals that are like skewed to one side or something, you know. Or, well, I'll tell you. Recently, it was like one of the few times uh, that this happened is when we were listening to that track that was recorded at uh, Abbey Road. Yeah. You know, listening to that, 
it sounded like 800s. Yeah. Like this is like this is what 800 diamonds yeah, sound. We know like. those speakers. Yeah. So yeah. We would the wood know, kit track, right? Yeah. So we would know. It's we, like we like, know. We understood completely. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. you can tell how they mastered it. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was know, really interesting. We know that playback sound. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's really inherent in us and what we part of what we. I've do never really felt that quite so strongly with their speakers. But yeah. yeah, that track was very clear. Yeah. It sounded like. 800 series BMWs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you could tell they were, you could, you could, right. Yeah. I mean, it's even if you didn't know, yeah. you'd have to say that those guys were using some really, really good freaking high end speakers mm -hmm. to listen to this because it, it sounded proper playing back on a really, really high end speaker. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's, that's the, that's how things jive in accuracy, if you ask me. Right. If you had the exact same system that they were laying it down on to play it back, yeah. then you could probably say that with some certainty that it's it's accurate to the sense of the the, the, the artist yeah, or the yeah. way that it, they intended it but beyond that it's not really possible because there's too many variables with amplifiers and 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 sources materials and different sources and decks and blah 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 you know the whole system yeah, mm -hmm. speakers so speakers can skew the sound too in all kinds of ways the crossovers have phase anomalies and you know rooms have issues so Technically speaking, there's no way to be accurate to the original Well, it recording. depends on what you want to be faithful to. Totally the artist's yeah. intent or the mastering engineer or the reality of the situation, what actually occurred on that day when they were recording Or what stuff. you're looking for. Yeah, I go on your side, <laughs> what, I, you know, what you're looking to, yeah. to like to listen to. Sure. Because yeah. really, it's for your enjoyment. It's yeah. for our enjoyment. The individual or the family or whatever is enjoyment. And, you know what I mean? And it, it should sound good to you. Yeah. Screw everybody else. You know, they don't <laughs> right. like it too bad. Yeah. Should they can like idea. what they like. Yeah. I mean, you see great. this stuff in all different kinds of things, like TVs and stuff. You see people that they're hypersensitive to try to get the colors to be represented properly so the colors are displayed exactly how they're supposed to. And yeah. that's a reasonable goal, I understand. But for the most part, you want it to look good to you, too. So. Well, calibrated TVs do tend to look better. They do look good, usually, yeah. <laughs> but it depends what you're playing always, back, though. It's, yeah. it's I mean, I've seen some movies that, that look kind of dim and dark on a calibrated TV. More often than not. Not as vivid. More often than not, on a less than stellar TV, you end up with a image that's very dim yeah. in order to get the yeah, widest tend to be a little display dark. Yeah, of yeah. color gamut out of the thing. Why and is so that? it's a tricky balance. They recorded it. Yeah, I don't know. Didn't look like that. You would assume they're using mo um, it's, uh, calibrated My understanding monitors. is it's a limitation of the playback device. It's your TV is not capable of representing the colors properly yeah. through all the brightnesses, and so yeah. there's an optimum brightness that it achieves more colors than others. And I mean, audio is kind of like that too. It's well, it's a balance between the darks and the brights. It's yeah. the same deal. It's with a audio. dynamic range problem. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Same thing. Right. Same with audio. Yeah. Same thing. But it's got to look good to you. It's got to sound good to you. So maybe it's a starting point to start a yeah. reference calibration, yeah. but it doesn't mean it's the ultimate. It doesn't always mean it's best. A lot of people like color, and I yeah. don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you want a little bit more flavor to your sound, oh, great. I know we've go been to family it. members' houses, and you look at it and go, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Green I really want to adjust Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, but hey, you, they like it. It's not my TV. Yeah, right. If you like it this way, that's yeah. cool. And my, uh, yeah. I know my f one friend, he, uh, he always has his TV on vivid. It's always like, oh, yeah. my God, way too vivid. But that's how he likes people it. People like it, yeah. yeah. So it's a little if, less significant. If they looked volume. at our TVs, they'd yeah. probably say this, the opposite, same yeah. thing too. It's like I don't really like yeah. that. It's it's too this or it's too dark. Right. He did like my TV though. So yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so so we're right back down to that accuracy is not the end all for for people who are subjectively enjoying. Their it's music. a reasonable goal. You're enjoying your music. You try to be as accurate as possible at playing it back, mm. but not to the extent that it ruins your enjoyment of the of the music. That's a good way at, to put it. At that point. You're gone too then, far. Then what's the point? Yeah, yeah, right. What is the damn point? Yeah. Yeah, all right. We're not scientists. We're, we're, we're people. Humans enjoying music. So anyway, thanks for, thanks for watching us, everybody. And uh, please subscribe to us and uh, take care of yourselves. Thank you.